Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Chairman, I should have interjected earlier, but I'm going to use the first few seconds of my time to communicate that I do take personal offense to what Congresswoman Wilson stated earlier. I took that as insulting about being spineless and having some kind of a list of affair with some lobby. And so I just want the record to show that. And I'll proceed with my question. The, uh, um, the, um, all members, all, all members are advised to um, leave out questions of motive or character of other members. So uh, the gentleman from Idaho's um, point is well taken. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary, for being here today and uh, appreciate your comments and testimony. Uh, in regard to that, you had uh, previously discussed in your written testimony, the need to strengthen the budget to address what you refer to as daunting barriers uh, of students, especially students in low income communities that face obtaining a high quality education. Uh, your budget request seeks to remove those barriers. And yet uh, my colleague, which is Representative Jacob, put forward a letter that I and many of us signed uh, on the committee sign that seeks to prevent additional barriers the department is putting in the way of charter schools to get started and operate. So this is the notice of priorities, requirements, definitions, and selection criteria, NPP, for charter schools and charter school programs. Uh, these, these schools help the poor and the rural students, especially in my state. Would you sp please speak to that? How do you, how do you reconcile the, the apparent conflict here? Uh, thank you for the question, um, Congressman. Um, and, and I do agree that uh, quality education comes in different forms. Um, Quality public charter schools are, are an option. As I said before, I've seen great examples uh, of, of uh, public charter schools meet needs of students and provide innovation. Um, what we're doing here through the regulatory process is proposing what we believe are reasonable proposals uh, that uh, increase uh, greater accountability, transparency, and fiscal responsibility, responsiveness to community, um, and collaboration. Now, a lot of the information in these proposals, they're not, they're not set yet, um, have been twisted a bit uh, to make it seem like we're requiring it. And that's absolutely not the case. Uh, these are proposals and we've done a lot of listening and we've gotten a lot of good feedback, which is the way the process should work. And Mr. Chair, I thank you for that. Uh, just a statement here. I want to make sure to communicate something. The charter schools consistently enroll at 10% of Idaho students, and they uh, have achieved largely positive results, both academically in terms of parental involvement, especially the brick and mortar ones. And they and our traditional public schools enjoy a large positive relationship within the school district. According to a Stanford study in 2019, the average Idaho charter school outperforms traditional public schools. And they also do well on average with the ISAT, the Idaho Standards Achievement Test. And so uh, they excel. And it, the administration appears to have some heartburn with, uh, with the charter school uh, situation. And, and I just want to go on record and tell you that, look, it's working in our state. And if you'd like to make a comment on that, great. But I do have another question I'd like to get to here as well. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to proceed. Uh, Mr. Uh, Secretary, uh, regarding loan forgiveness, under the borrow defense uh, uh, to repayment, FSA's website states the summary reports on the number of claims filed, approved, and et cetera, are supposed to be published on a monthly basis. Are you aware there's not been any report published since December of 2021? I will look into that, sir, and uh, have my staff reach out to yours about the reporting frequency. Please do. It would just be helpful that uh, uh, to understand the volume of the borrower defense claims before the new proposed regulation is issued. And it's my understanding that there's a proposed rule updating the BDR discharge process uh, to be released in the coming weeks. Is that your understanding? Is that correct? Um, again, I can have uh, the, our team uh, reach out to you regarding borrower defense. We know that over $2 billion in borrower defense uh, was provided to 132,000 borrowers uh, to date. We just need that information, uh, Mr. Secretary, it's important as part of the process. I also think better understanding of the volume of claims is important given but I've made uh, aware of, of uh, some concerning practices by adv advocacy groups that appear to have the presidents here with respect to debt cancellation. Mr. Secretary, are you aware of a group called the Debt Collective? No, uh, no, I'm not, 
in communication or it's, aware it's of a, I'm just about out of time here, but it's a, it's a left-wing organization. The mission is to demand and achieve full debt cancellation for all. Just want to bring that to your attention. That's what we're up against. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I yield back.